Welcome to Ruby's Talk Show. This show aims to highlight the amazing initiatives of women, men and children who are working tirelessly for a better future. The theme of episode number 3 is Empower with your story. So ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for the guest speakers of today's show. Rachel Beck, author, speaker and photographer from USA. Monica Swamy, career transition and progression coach, speaker and trainer from India. Adama Kalokwa, global goodwill ambassador, SDG advocate and motivational speaker from USA. Welcome everyone. Welcome to Ruby's Talk Show. This show aims to highlight the amazing initiatives of women, men and children who are working tirelessly for a better future. The theme of episode number 3 is Empower with your story. So ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for the guest speakers of today's show. Rachel Beck, author, speaker and photographer from USA. Monica Swamy, career transition and progression coach, speaker and trainer from India. Adama Kalokwa, global goodwill ambassador, SDG advocate and motivational speaker from USA. Welcome everyone. Hello everyone. Welcome to Ruby's Talk Show. A talk show which is there to inspire you. a talk show which speaks about itself how you are doing what you are doing and what needs to be done in the world we are really happy when we see things that are going the way we want them to go but then we become sad we become upset when things don't go as we planned them storytelling is an amazing way to connect with people every person in the world has a story to tell they have a story to inspire you they have a story to make you understand what works and what doesn't work and today we have an amazing amazing channel of people who are going to be there with you a panel of dynamic women who are here to create the ambiance to create a world that you are really going to love they are going to be sharing their stories and they are going to inspire you So ladies and gentlemen let's not delay put your hands together and welcome our very first speaker Rachel Beck an author speaker and photographer welcome Rachel good <laughs> well good afternoon from here from sunny florida and thank you so much for having me same here Rachel we have been really really looking forward to hear you for a long long time and finally the day has come today <laughs> So please tell us something tell the viewers who are you who is the real Rachel we would like to hear that first and then we move further So I do many different things um I am a social media influencer I am an author I am speaker and I also produce a show every day and really what I'm trying to do is help as many people as I can in this world because people are they're really suffering right now and they they need help so that's what i'm trying to do daily wonderful wonderful i'm really happy to have you on the show and with that we move to the second speaker that is monica swami monica swami is a career transition and progression coach a speaker and trainer all the way from india welcome monica <laughs> hi dr ruby hi rachel It's my pleasure to be here. Hi, everyone. <laughs> very well, very well said. It's like always, you know. Today we are here from three different corners of the world: Rachel from USA, Monica from India, and I from Switzerland. Yet we are excited from yeah. different parts of, from different time zones, to be here on the show and talk to the people who are listening to you. We have another person to be coming, uh, but I see that she's having some technical issues, so we'll wait for her. Let the show go on, and as she is able to join in, we will have her with all of you together today. All right. 
so when we said the show must go on you know these are the very powerful words because sometimes even as actors even as the people who are dancing or doing anything across the world there are times when things don't go as we plan them to go and that's exactly what is happening right now when dr adama is having technical issues despite the fact it was all planned so well anyways it's important when we talk about storytelling when we talk about what it is who are you where you come from it is very important that every person should understand the basics of what is happening around us so first of all i would like to ask rachel my lovely friend from usa first of all hearty congratulations for your new book that is really wonderful and is going all over the world making news which is finding your way when life changes your plans please tell us something more about the book what is it all about you know the story came from a girlfriend of mine she felt you know the power of women right seeing some side you that you might not see yourself mm -hmm. the story is my true story my story is not for the pain of heart i've been through a lot of um struggles i've been through some extremely hard times and even more happened after i wrote the book so it came from her she said rage do me a favor sit down i believe that you have a story inside of her inside of you and I down the first day and wrote for 5 hours and did that consistently throughout the entire process what the goal is is to help people to get back up no matter how hard life is because we all go through deeply personal challenges and the other message i'm trying to share every day <laughs> is do you know somebody's stories because i think a lot of miscommunication i think that people make too many assumptions about people i know this personally because people make assumptions about me every day and i always respond and say it's not correct you need to learn my story so the whole idea is to motivate people to inspire them i don't want them to quit on I have had many reasons why I quit on life and I made deeply conscious choices and I can see those moments to get I'm sorry I can't hear you. Is it okay now? Yeah. <laughs> That happens with me all the time. No worries. <laughs> because i really want to you know mute un mute myself so that i can hear the speakers very well and when i start asking the question again i forget to unmute which is very normal so you said like sometimes in life we have to make some conscious decisions rachel so while writing this book what was the intention what was going on in your mind that you wanted to pen it down or document it for the world to read to help people to help people Mm -hmm. because i have gone through so much trauma mm -hmm. if i wanted to use my voice for extremely important topics like mm -hmm. um i'm trying to use my voice to end racism i'm trying mm -hmm. to use my voice to end anti-semitism i am a jewish indian woman mm -hmm. i'm trying to use my voice to empower as many people as i can by using positivity you only see me using positive encouraging words in the mm -hmm. way you I want to talk about the definition of a woman what it means to be a woman I am a woman who battled a disease for 20 years mm -hmm. I battled endometriosis and I'm just sharing my experience with it I also underwent a hysterectomy in 2017 so the definition of being a woman it needs to be expanded and not confined. I've had women tell me I'm not a woman because I'm a mother, I'm not a mom. Mm -hmm. I've had women tell me that I'm not a woman because I had a hysterectomy. So, I am trying to change the conversation mm -hmm. of what it means to be a woman because that is a deeply personal what we feel about ourselves. Very true, very true. It's it's like you know, sometimes there are certain things which women need to share you know it should not be like a like something that you are embarrassed of or you feel should i say this or not it is important it is important that women should share only when you share it gives 
I would say encouragement to others to learn from you because I often see your beautiful uh, videos on LinkedIn. You're like a LinkedIn queen for me. And I just love because it's so inspiring. Uh, you have people from all walks of life who are there on the show. They talk about it. They discuss things. And of course, there are certain things which resonates with some people. And that's how it clicks. You know, whenever there's something that resonates, you stay with it because you prefer the more you are clicking with that kind of a person or those kind of groups, you learn every day something different, something similar, but it connects all the time. Thank you. Thank you. And I really like it. And that's the reason I had this, uh, I would say, like a really in a sincere wish from a long, long time that I have to get Rachel on the show because I find you very inspiring. Thank uh, very down to earth. <laughs> yeah, I what you see is what you get. <laughs> like I people say all of like when people meet me in person, and I thank you, deeply humbled by your words. My goal with the show, I came up with it three years ago when the first day of lockdown in March. Mm -hmm. And um I woke up and I'm an empath, so I felt the pain across the world. You know, the first day and I said, Oh my gosh, my network is going to freak out right now. That that's what's going to happen. And I felt it in my heart. And I'm also trying to humanize social media. That's what I'm mm -hmm. trying to do and shine a light on other people. So I interview people inside mm -hmm. of my work. And you two are welcome to come on the show. I would love to have you. <laughs> and the whole idea is to people are obsessed with numbers. Well, guess what? Every single number you see represents a real human being with a heart and soul. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to get people to say hey mm -hmm. this is a real person we are way more than the number way more than that exactly exactly and do you think sharing personal stories at workplace can have an impact on your professional life because sharing stories is always like like you know like a little bit on a dicey side it can have a good repercussion it can have a bad repercussion uh monica what do you think i would like to hear from you <laughs> I believe storytelling is the new, new. Okay. So why am I saying this, the new, new? Because most of the learning these days coming from an L&D background and doing a lot of work into the learning and development space with corporates mm -hmm. and universities, storytelling is something which helps people to understand the things better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And more, uh, you know, it adds a lot of glitter when it is real time stories. Because Very experiences true. added add so much of value into someone's life, they do not require to undergo the same struggle. Very when true. Someone Very else true. has taken up to reach the peak of their lives. You can just cut down all of those struggles by just going through some wonderful stories and experience and learn out of it. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. Stories are definitely. I I love hearing them. <laughs> I love learning from them and I love sharing my own too. But but again, coming back to my question, if it's a story, you know, like you are kind of, uh, you know, opening yourself to your professional world as well. So how much do you think it's okay to share? Or where do you think you should have a guard? Because sometimes it's good and sometimes it can have a repercussion. So again, my question still remains the same. Uh, is it okay to bear yourself? Especially when I'm not just talking about female, I'm talking about your colleagues at work, which could be men as well as women. So with my experience working with different kind of people in my 14 years of journey inside industry, mm -hmm. I would say there is no black or white zone of sharing these stories. There's a mm -hmm. gray zone which you need to create every time by mixing and matching the situation and the people with whom you are working. Because mm -hmm. definitely... Your secrets cannot go out in the market because you True. never know, you know, when they might fall in an, an opposite way for you. So mm -hmm. definitely I would say stories to an, an extent which you can share with your professional world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Journey, the struggle and all the things to an, an extent which is shareable. I would never, you know, kind of suggest anybody that your stories need to consider all the 100% of those secrecies which you want to hide it from the world. It's absolutely fine if you do not mm -hmm. want to share. Mm -hmm. There's a gray zone which you need to create for yourself. How much it is required? In what situation? How much can you share? And at mm -hmm. the same time, it is not backfiring you at any point of time in your career. Very true. Very true. 
Rachel, what do you think? I would like to know your take on it. Okay, well, I work by myself, so <laughs> this, is, this is me and my puppy at work every day. Um, so, listen, I think that there there's two sides to it because I have worked, you know, in environments. Mm -hmm. I think that you, like she's talking about, you don't cross the line. Mm -hmm. There's a certain line. But I also think, listen, if you're working with people every day and you're building those friendships, uh, who wants to go to work and, you know, not have friends, right? So you're going to go out to lunch. You're going to go out to dinners. You're going to do cocktail hours. So, of course, you're going to build the friendships and share the story. You know, you pick and choose who your inner circle is. You pick mm -hmm. and choose who you trust. That's what True. it comes down to. I'm big on the inner circle. You know, I know who are the people that, you know, I truly trust and have my mm -hmm. back and theirs. So... That's what it comes down to. I, I agree with you, Monica, because certain things should. And then, But if you're outside of work and you're like going to lunch with friends and you're having conversation, I mean, it is about the relationships. Mm -hmm. If somebody is sitting down and, you know, three of us go to lunch and Monica says, uh, Rach, I really want to share my story with you. I'm going to mm -hmm. be there to listen to her. Or if I say, Dr. Ruby, what's going on in your life today? How are you feeling? Mm -hmm. People need to be heard now more. Or I can't stress that enough. Can't exactly. That. Exactly. Well, people need to be empathetic. That's there. Like, you know, um, as a manager or as an employer, you know, you have to step in the shoes of your co-workers and understand what's going on. But sometimes when I feel when you bear it all too much, you know, sometimes it can be taken other way around also, you know. People can just say, oh, she always has a story or she always has this thing, you know, and that's what is always like, you know, on the other side bothering me, how much you should say and how much you should keep back. Because, yes, at work, we have some, you know, people in our inner circle that we're more comfortable talking to them. That's normal. But sometimes we have people who pose they are very close to us, but they are kind of backstabbing, you know. They are the ones who are talking, she always has an excuse or she's always coming up with something or the other, you know, things like that. So, so that is something that is always concerning, you know, that's a big area of concern. That's a gray area. How do you convert that area or how do you recognize from those people within your inner circle that it is okay to open up or take a step back or just say what you are okay to say or share? Monica. Dr. Ruby, I would just add that time is one of the biggest factor mm -hmm. to realize the fact how much you should share. Because mm -hmm. you cannot create this entire thing called as trust in one day. Over mm -hmm. a period of time, over a period of years, you understand people, you know who are standing with you in the bad times, you know mm -hmm. who are going to, you know, who are going to support you and who are going to be there for you. Then that's exactly the time when you realize how much stories and all the stories are supposed to be shared or not. And I believe time plays a very important role because time is something which is sometimes good and sometimes bad. And that's exactly mm -hmm. where you learn it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rachel, would you like to add something more? Absolutely agree with Monica. It does have to do with, you know, and it comes down to trust. It very true. It comes, you know, there's like we always say, there's a time and a place for everything. Certain things should not be discussed at the office. <laughs> I understand because sometimes like, I'm like, wow, did that person just share that? <laughs> so it, it's, it comes down to etiquette. Time, place, is it appropriate? All, all that really, really matters. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the certain things, certain places, it should not. You said <laughs> exactly exactly i think time um you know you find your uh you know that i you know that you have the third eye that opens up like okay she's one i can share or he's the one i can share with it doesn't have to be with gender thing you know because sometimes we feel, do feel more comfortable with male employees as well or male co-workers as well we not feel so comfortable with female because you know there's always that area of little bit of uh, professional jealousy and things like that so i guess that we're trying to, <laughs> trying to teach women there's no reason for any woman to be jealous of another woman there's no reason for uh, a woman to have be of another woman we should all be clapping for each other and celebrate each other's success and push each other to get to the very 
very top. And as soon as women understand that and they, they understand the importance of it, they'll get there. Mm -hmm. They will get there. They need to let go of the other things and all the time that they're spending on jealousy, envy, sure. right? They could be doing the work that's mm -hmm. necessary to get there. They could also be building and realizing, wait a minute, she's actually on my team. She's mm -hmm. actually working for me. She true. wants to see me as well. True, true, very true. Uh, hi, Terence Cole. Yeah, we are waiting for Dr. Adama. She's having some technical issues. I think there's a friend of Dr. Adama who is looking forward to hear from her, but we are also looking forward to hear from her. Um, there is some technical issues. Just hang on there and listen to Monica and Rachel. Dr. Adama will be joining soon. <laughs> All right, moving on. Monica, I would like to know from you, you are an engineer, a career coach, a speaker and a trainer. We all can see how well you have been, you know, talking and giving such wonderful ideas. But please tell us, how do you manage to wear all these different hats so efficiently? You know, with a smile. I, I see that you're constantly smiling. How do you do that? Okay. So, Dr. Ruby, this is a question which I believe I answer on a daily basis. Uh, I moved from my engineering job roles into the HR side and the l &D side for a sole reason that I discovered the passion of my life. Mm -hmm. And my passion was not just working with machines and technology, but more mm -hmm. of with humans. Mm -hmm. And there are two specific things which, you know, I use on a daily basis to handle all these multiple roles of being a trainer, coach, and speaker. And uh -huh. these two things are, I'm very much clear what exactly I'm doing and where I'm trying to reach and what I'm trying to do how I'm trying to help others, what exactly I'm trying to do with the with my audiences. So I'm clear. And second is my energy. Mm -hmm. I am all made of my energy and I want to give maximum energy to whatever I'm doing. And that's where, you know, everything gets possible. So these are the two things. Hey, Dr. Adama. <laughs> She's finally there. Wonderful. Welcome, Dr. Adama. So good to have you. <laughs> Can you hear us? Dr. Adama, can you hear us? I think now she is not able to hear us. Dr. Adama, can you hear us? Because we can see you very well. Yes. Yes, we can see you. But we can't hear you. <laughs> Oh my God, these technical issues. <laughs> and yeah. Dr. Ruby, that's where I say I enhance power skills in these AI times. <laughs> so as much dependent we are getting on technology, still we mm -hmm. need our life skills and power skills. Our patients, Definitely. our communications, and you know, getting connected with people, they are still the important life skills required in these times. Very true, very true. But tell me one thing, like, was it an easy transition for you? Like, you are a technical person, you're from a technical field, and then you said you moved to HR. How easy or how difficult was it for you? So as I uh, mentioned, Dr. Ruby, I discovered my true passion when I started up with my journey of engineering, when I was working with different kinds of technologies. I started up with Accenture into oh, OKP, man. and thereafter I worked into multiple oh, technical roles. And I realized, you know, very soon I, I cannot do this for remaining 30, 40 years of my career. Mm -hmm. And once I discovered the right thing, the transition became easy. And mm -hmm. while studying this entire ICF coaching, I was very clear, I'm going to help people how they can make these transitions easy. Mm -hmm. Because whenever an individual is taking a transition, be it in the life cycle or be it in the corporate life cycle, every mm -hmm. time this transition and change brings a lot of issues, challenges, concerns, frustration, tears and fears. Mm -hmm. And I'm someone who wants to help people during these various transitions. Wonderful, wonderful. No, it's it's really important. Like, you know, the transition has to be smooth. Just as when we take the airplane, you know, sometimes we have those, uh, you know, uh, the, it's, the transition is not so smooth and we're like, oh, it was not a good landing or it was not a good takeoff. 
So same as journey of life, you know, one has to be prepared with the roller coaster drive. You know, sometimes it's good and sometimes it could not be as planned. And of course, we have to be ready with any of these things that can come up. So Rachel, like as Monica just mentioned, she is wearing different hats in life. I'm sure you must also be switching hats, you know, just as women, we like, I love your hair color. Thank you. <laughs> just as we women, we like to match everything, you know, matching lipstick, matching hair, you know, matching hair, uh, what do you call it, accessories, yeah. uh, bags and stuff like that. So how have you been managing in your day-to-day -day life? Do you also wear different hats? Many different hats. <laughs> Many different hats. <laughs> um, I'm huge on uh, management. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, I am very, you know, when it comes to my work and stuff, I'm extremely organized. Mm -hmm. So that is, I think, is really the key. Mm -hmm. And what are you doing with your time? How are you using your time? Are you an effective? You're a phenomenal communicator, by the way, Ruby. I have to tell you. You're phenomenal. Thank you. Um, and that's a huge part of it is communication. So while I'm bal balancing all these ha hats, because like you said, I, I, mm -hmm. I do a lot during the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, where where she needs to go. And it's really based on like who, you know, where the help needs to go. Exactly what Monica was talking about. She mm -hmm. should help people. Is she back <laughs> here? <laughs> Dr. Radama, can you hear us? Doesn't look like. Uh, I think she's frozen. I don't think so she can hear because her picture looks frozen. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can't win over technology. You know, it's, it's great when it is working the way we want it to work. But then when it goes a bit crazy, you know, uh, we do face this music and it makes us dance what we are doing right now. <laughs> I think we as women, we do wear a lot of hats just as, you know, we like wearing makeup. We, we have to wear these hats from time to time because, you know, sometimes you could be very happy doing what you want to do. And sometimes it could be a little bit crazy as well. You know, just as I said, uh, Monica, if you're doing things the way you want them to do, you know, it's it's great. But when things don't work the way we want them to work, of course, we have to have the network, our, our, our professional network who needs to help us as well as and at the same time, have our families as well. So women who have a good mix or I would say good uh, balance between the professional and her personal network in place, things go, I guess, pretty well. <laughs> okay, I think Dr. Adama should be back again because she's constantly going in and out. Yes, it should be fine. Uh, now I want to know from anyone can tell, anyone wants to, who want, whoever wants to share first, an instant in your life where you were emotionally drained, you know, you felt like, oh, I've had it. It could be, you know, positive or negative, anything. You were emotionally drained. And how did you deal with it? Yes, Rachel. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were asking <laughs> at first. <laughs> how have I done that? I've had so many times where I've been completely emotionally drained. Mm -hmm. I mean, unplugged to the point I can't even begin to explain to you. How did I do it? You were talking about support, mm -hmm. support through friends, support, support through family. Mm -hmm. I so many times, so many times, um, and I've had to do what was necessary. You know, we always talk about you know our souls being going through so much, and that we have to fill it up again. And it's, it's something that I work on. It's something that I absolutely, and when I need to take time to, to take care of myself, I do that. I think that that's really, really crucial. I don't think enough, it's really important. That's why I use my voice for mental health and self-care because, and as women, we tend to feel guilty about it. I don't. Um, and I try to teach my network that and may you never feel guilty for taking care of yourself. I can't help people unless I take care of myself. I mean, that's the reality, reality of it. Mm -hmm. We know that there's a huge amount of um, energy transference. Mm -hmm. 
people. So I take on that energy all day long. And it's important. I think I, I absolutely agree with what you said. Self-care. You know, many women think self-care is not something nice. You are being selfish. We always put ourselves the lowest, you know, lowest pedestal. First mm -hmm. is the family, then is the children or whatever. You know, the, the order might differ from each person. But self-care, people think that they are guilty that they say we put ourselves first. So it's nice, Rachel, that you are encouraging more and more women to 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 be a little bit more, uh, you know, self-indulgent because the more you are taking care of yourself first, you will be able to take care of others. Yeah. Others you just yeah. follow. And women need to stop feeling guilty about it. I'm trying to get that message. Don't feel guilty. You have nothing to feel guilty about it. Men mm -hmm. or women. Let's say men or women because I've got, you know, close, close, uh, many, um, you know, best friends who got, and same thing. Like, it is, that, it is always okay. For us. I don't know who put that out into the universe. Years ago, saying that it's selfish, uh -huh. care of ourselves, but it, they didn't do a service to people uh -huh. by saying that you're a selfish person for taking it. No, we're not. we are not. We have responsibility. We have people that we take care of every day. People that we're trying to help. We have dreams that we're trying to make come true. Mm -hmm. If we can't even, if we're at a level, here's the reality. Mental health. I just had a psychologist recently on this. Mm -hmm. Mental health issues are up eight hundred percent in this country. Eight hundred percent, and that's why I'm always at. Be kind. Be respectful. Don't add any more stress to people's lives because you're stressed out enough right now. So yeah, we got to keep talking about this. Mm -hmm. I think the more we talk, the more we are able to open up, the more we are able to show others that, you know, there's always someone suffering somewhere, you know, in some part of the world. Life is not as it's shown on social media. <laughs> Monica, what do you have to say? What do you think? How social media is painting this picture and how should we react to it? <laughs> I believe Rachel has already nailed it. So somehow women have taken this responsibility that they are responsible for the entire universe. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. whether it's their husband, their children, their parents, their, you know, in-laws, relatives, and, you know, even when they are working inside organization, the women's will come up first and they'll say, oh, we are ready to take the responsibility. If not the success of the project, but they are ready to take the responsibility. Now, um, as Rachel said, you know, self-care, being a women transition coach, I help a lot of women to take mm -hmm. care of the transitions which they go in the different life cycle from mm -hmm. being a girl to women, then to being a mother. And then somebody who is, who is a mother and also working at the same time. All these transitions require another important component that is self-love. Now we are ready to shower love on our husbands and our kids. But when it's about us, it's so much challenging to love our own self. And most of the time, if I talk about my own journey, there have been multiple instances where I was emotionally drained, not because of just the work, but because of this simple quotient where we are trying to balance the professional and the personal side. I'll balance my professional side, I'll balance my personal side, and I'll just be number one in it, which is actually not possible. Slowly and steadily, you understand in this race and in this balancing, you're also expecting a lot of things from your loved ones, be it your, you know, organizational group, your business groups, and even your families. And a lot of time, these expectations are not completed. And that's where you get even more emotionally drained. So as an individual, when I started up, you know, taking up, in, I, I took in charge of my own life and own self-love. The very first thing was I stopped expecting. And believe me, my life changed. And I started believing my husband loves me so much. <laughs> my kid loves me so much. And it all started from the point where the expectation was stopped and self-love enhanced. And then the world was literally more beautiful to live. And still the struggle of balance was going on. Still, you know, all the other challenges were there. But I started enjoying the journey. 
I think that's so very very important. Take uh, what uh, Monica you just mentioned. No expectations, you know, because we women we want to do everything perfectly. We want to be masters. We want to be the best mom, best you know, uh, at work, best wife. But again, you know, you can't be best at everything. You know, there is a limit to everything, and that's where we start comparing, or that's where we start. I would say stop living and enjoying that moment. So it's very important, you know. We have to be mindful of whatever small actions we are doing. Mindfulness has to be there, even if you are putting makeup, you know. So give it your best shot, you know. You know, because the more you're comparing, oh, she has a red lipstick. I should also red put red lipstick. Maybe it doesn't go with your face. Hang on, <laughs> it's not something the that you I should have Rachel's hair color. It might suit me, but then I realized, no, it's not going to suit me. Absolutely, Rachel, I, I love. I love your hair color. <laughs> Absolutely, as I said, as I said, you know, there is something that we understand ourselves with passage of time. You know, and it's not easy. Just as we compare, we need to see what can work in our situations. It may or may not be good in other people's situations. So we have to do a lot of trial and errors all the time. And maybe with passage of time, it works. And with passage of time, it can get better. But again, as I said, storytelling or narrating an incident which was very emotional for you. Tell me, think well. You know, we are not in a hurry. Not think a hurry. well. Was it something that completely drained you out, or you were like, okay, enough, I can't take it anymore, or did you try to fight it out and work towards making it, you know, in your favor? Whichever okay. instead. Can I yes. just something Monica said because I thought it was incredible. We were uh -huh. Monica, in two thousand eight, due to multiple experiences of first years of my life. Um, I learned the lesson you had. I have zero expectations of people. And I like to be pleasantly surprised, right? But when I had that year, um, that was one of the most freeing, freeing, exactly what you're talking about, having, why should we have expectations of people? And once I, I changed due to my experiences that year, I learned very quickly. I don't have people like, how do have expectations? Patients and people, I'm like, why should one should I put that pressure on another human being? That's not even fair to do it to them. They do, you know, when people do it to me, I'm like, you know, it's not it's not fair to bring on me. I love that you brought that up because that it was one of the most, had a couple moments where like I felt more free in life and not having expectations of people is one of the most freeing moments in my life. And also, like, you know, when we expect, you know, like you are getting in a relationship, whether it's your family relationship, whether it's your relationship with your peers at workplace, we start thinking that what are others thinking about us? You know, there's always this. It's not just women. It's everyone. You know, we are always looking for self-approval. What do you think about it? Is self-approval something that you should be concerned about or you can just ignore it? Anyone I've can take it. Yes. Monica, what's your answer? I think uh, approval and that to self-approval is important for me. But taking mm -hmm. approval from everybody around, that is something I used to do a decade back and I realized the results were not great. So I, mm -hmm. I moved that approval into self-approval. And now believe me, the results are fantastic and the journey of life is also going fantastic. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So that... Approval from others have moved to self-approval. So if you are okay, if you are comfortable with something, you give it a green tech and go ahead. It doesn't bother you what others think because it's giving you happiness. You are happy and that's how you go forward. Great, great take, guys. Wonderful. Rachel, your take? <laughs> I have the thoughts on that topic. <laughs> um, we, you know, we can't control what people think of us. People have already judged us, criticized us. They could possibly be, and I'm saying this through the work that I do because I can tell you stories. But. Mm -hmm. So um, we can't control what people think of us. We can do our best, you know, and that's all we can do. Mm -hmm. But once you realize that you can't control them and that lots of times when 
condemning you, criticizing you, judging you. We know that that's more about them than mm-hmm. you and their insecurities. But then that's something really, really important for people to know. You're never going to control what people think about you. They've already, it's in, it's in their brain. Mm-hmm. They are their judgments. And I deal with it all the time doing what I do as an influencer. The things that people have said to me, it's astounding. It's just astounding. Oh, um, so they've already made the, they made their assumption, and um, I'm like, well, completely wrong. Not true at all. I always tell people I'd rather you ask me the question than assuming. And you know, Doctor, I answer the questions. <laughs> so um, we can't control what what people think of us. And talking about expectations, Monica, that's another freeing thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. People are going to think what they think of us. No matter what we do, no matter what we do, it will never ever be good enough. I promise you that. I see this every single day with the work I do. It will never ever be good enough. All we can do is Mm -hmm. teach people the right way to do it. And also, like just to add on, Rachel, what you're saying, we can't make everyone happy at all times. No matter what we do, you know, no matter what we are. Whatever role we are playing, you know, whether it's your mother-in-law, whether it's your mother, <laughs> whether it's your children, any, any any relationship that you can look around yourself, you know, we can't please everyone. No. So one has to stop living in that myth that I can make everything workable. Yes, you can make it workable, but you may think you are best. Others may not be able to think that you are doing a good job. So they will always look for loopholes. Yes, always. But at the same time, I would also like to add that, yes, there can be few stakeholders. Mm-hmm. Few stakeholders, these are like really close people to you, mm-hmm. wherein you are not going for approval, but at the same time, you consider their well-being also. True. Now, True. these can be very close set of people. So you cannot live a life where you are just not thinking about anyone. But True. yes, thinking True. about everyone is an issue. Mm-hmm, but thinking mm-hmm. about few set of people, you know, with whom who are like pillars of your life, or maybe who are with you every time, and mm-hmm. their happiness and you know their well-being also matters. Mm-hmm. Then yes, they can be the stakeholders in these decisions in these mm-hmm. approvals. Very true. Very true. Like when when you said stakeholders, I thought like we are talking about business now. <laughs> Not at all. I'm talking about life. That's an interesting. Very nice, very interesting uh, way of expressing it. And yes, it is. uh, Okay, Terence Call is saying self-approval is not important, but it is something. uh, It is something that. I'm not able to see positive impact. It is uh, self-approval is not important, but it's impact on others is is what is that matters is. Mm -hmm. Having positive um, impact. Positive impact. Positive impact. Thank you, Terence. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, it's it's important. Like you know, when we talk about this kind of any approval, you know, it's it's sometimes like it's it's very common. It happens with me all the time. You know, when I'm in a dressing room, uh, you know, in any of the shopping malls, I'm trying a dress, and there's a woman passing by or anyone passing by, and they say, "Oh, it looks nice. Where did you find that?" So immediately, I think, "Oh, I think I'm looking nice." Even if in the first place, when I look in the mirror, I did not like it. But just because someone told me, I feel I'm looking nice automatically. It's like a conditioning we go through. But that doesn't mean, you know, that maybe the dress is not looking nice. But because someone said a thumbs up, it makes me think that it is good. So I think it's it's very important, as rightly said by both of you, self-approval is the most important thing. You have to give it first preference but at the same time when we talk about um people in our inner circle you know whether it's your husband whether it's your children whether it's your parents you know they are the ones who should matter the most because they care for you they are going to be there with you during thick and thin you know so they are not the ones who are going to ridicule you if you failed at something but others they would be the first one to ridicule you in case you made a mistake so I guess, you know, with passage of time, we do get an idea, a clearer idea, who are the ones who are in the inner circle and who are the ones who are doing or making a bigger impact in our life. All right, moving on, I think, Rachel, 
is definitely rocking her hairstyle i see you know some people commenting <laughs> thank you i can't see the comments sorry cuz i'm doing this from my yeah side. i don't know why the comments are coming but it was kind of blurred that's why i was even though it's in front of me i was not able to read <laughs> thank, thank you to everybody who um is joining us today to we appreciate it. and i see that the connection like you know connections that we make you know when we are having these kind of talk shows more and more people who are watching us more and more people who will be watching us this somehow resonate whether it's story of monica whether it's story of rachel and of course i would really give a big shout out that please read rachel's book <laughs> grab your hands to read rachel's book it is something that is definitely going to inspire you you will be hearing a wonderful story and it's something you know which is which, that's why she wanted to share because not many people share their stories you know very few people they want to share the genuine thing that happened so it's important only when you share it is like a ray of hope to other people in different part of the world that if rachel could do it if monica could do it i can do it as well so you know sharing stories is something really wonderful because it does give a belief to the people that we can do something different you know it's not always what we see on social media the beautiful pictures the rosy gardens life is not about pictures and you know rosy things all the time there are ups and downs as well i always say it's my favorite expression life is not rainbows and not what it is <laughs> real life is sometimes different than the real life i genuinely oh. believe very well said real life is different from the real life oh wow <laughs> all the instagram people who are into making reels or facebook people who are making into reels please watch out and hear it loud and clear because reality is always hard hitting and very few people are able to appreciate it you know with a pinch of salt everyone is you know always ready to poke one fingers but when it's a reality it just hits you somewhere or the other So on a parting note I know we would love to talk more and more but time is running thank you Latif thank you for joining in he <laughs> shares a rose for the ladies thank you thank you very <laughs> so it's always nice uh, you know uh, though we don't want to end the program but I would just want to hear from you on a parting note what will be your message to the people who are watching you Mama, any message I, on life any message on what you want them to you know be inspired so with. i have a vision of my life which i am living every single day with my training and coaching it is enhancing power skills in the ai time it mm -hmm. simply means as much strong we as a community as a country and as a globe are getting you know stronger in ai and automation and robotics still the need of life skills and the power skills will continue and they are your biggest strength they are your biggest power so do not miss to be a human you are a human but do not miss to be one very well said very well said monica i i say that all the time <laughs> ei over ai which is emotional intelligence over artificial okay. intelligence so we might be hitting the rocks we might be hitting the moon or the mars, the mars. but until we don't connect with people until we don't emotionally connect with people nothing is going to happen nothing is going to work you could be the best at what you are doing but unless you don't hit it with the audience which i assure rachel would agree with me because she is always rocking her linkedin uh, you know shows when she's speaking she's got it connected you know she's gotten connected with the people and that's why they are there to watch her right so the more you connect the more you are creating networks you will definitely go a longer way rachel over to you <laughs> just be a kind respectful that's all i ask people to do i always treat people the way i want them to treat me mm -hmm. we need more empathetic souls we need more sensitive souls and we definitely need more kind people across this world that's my message very true very thank true you. thank you for very having true. me today it was my honor and privilege to be here with you thank you Same here, same here, same here, Monica and Rachel. It was really wonderful to have you, Thank ladies, you on the show. <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to have another show with you guys somewhere, someday. You, you know, just because it's always nice. I'll be there. I'll be there. Definitely. We look forward to join you back. <laughs> so that was Rachel and Monica, all the way from all USA and India. 
who were here sharing their story, who were here talking about the ups and downs in their life, what they did and what they are doing consistently. So in case you want to make an impact, in case you are struggling, please don't give up. There's always a ray of hope. There's always a sense of achievement if you are able to see the other side of the dark tunnel. So keep your seat belts fastened. Life is a journey. Enjoy it. Life is a journey. You should not be having any expectations because if you have expectations and the expectations don't meet, it always hurts. So believe in the message. Believe in the art of storytelling. The more you share your stories, the more you are going to inspire the world, the more you're going to connect with the people. So all the best. Stay tuned. You're most welcome to connect with us anytime, everywhere. All the best. God bless you.